Hello and welcome back to Miss Finance. My name is Rebecca and on this channel I go for all things accounting, finance and investment related so if you do like this kind of stuff please do consider subscribing as it does help the channel grow. So today I'm going to be talking about what I wish I had known before I went ahead and studied AAT. Now if you don't know what the AAT is, it's just the Association of Accounts Technicians and there are three levels that you can take, so level two, level three and level four and once you finish the AAT you can go on to do further studies such as the ACA, ACCA, CMA, SIPFA which are further qualifications in accounting. I think the first thing that I wish I'd known is that you don't actually have to be that good at maths to do AAT. So I was under the presumption, and I'm sure you've been told this at school, if you're good at maths then you should be common accountant. But realistically, in the day-to-day, -day, unless you get to the point where you're you know, a commercial business manager or somebody who's looking at forecasting in a business and sort of statistical analysis, that sort of thing, then you don't necessarily need to be good at maths. As long as you've got a calculator with you, you can actually get a calculator on your phone or even on your laptop. And within applications like Excel, there's a calculator built in. So again, you're not going to be doing a whole lot of arithmetic. So you don't necessarily have to be good at maths. The second thing that I wish I'd known before doing AAT was that you can actually do this in three years or less. So when I was studying, we didn't have a choice and we had to do level two, level three and level four. And they were spaced out over a year according to the exam timetable. But I've known since of individuals who've taken level two, level three and level four and completed those in I think six months was the record. So it just goes to show that you can do that a lot quicker than three years like what I did. The next thing that I wish I'd known before doing AAT was that you can actually self-study. So you don't necessarily need a training provider to go ahead and study the AAT. And even these days, there is government grants that you can get towards the AAT. Again, that wasn't the case circa a decade ago, but now you can because they've recognised that as a diploma qualification. So it's worth checking out as well if you are self-studying that you can do that and that's an option because a lot of the time when you go with a training provider and you go through an employer, you're on a set salary and after you've finished the AAT, you're expected to do another year of service in effect in a lot of cases. It just depends on the student contract that they give you, but in some cases you could be tied in and have to work there for that full year before you go ahead and move on. So in the beginning when you're studying AAT, you'll be introduced to double entry bookkeeping and a lot of the time students really don't get this and there is a lot of comments that I see, particularly in the student group, that say, I just don't get it. And then somebody will comment down below, well, just give it a couple of weeks and it'll just click. And I promise you, for anybody who's studying AAT or thinking about it, at some point down the line, it will all just click into place. It's really weird. You just be there, you know, before bed or something. Or maybe at work just doing something and all of a sudden you'll think, wait, that made sense. I get it now. So there's a lot of moments that you'll have when you're studying AAT where that will just happen. So the other thing that I didn't know when I was doing my AAT, and I wish I had known, is that if you do the AAT, you can then move on quite as quickly towards the ACA or ACCA or SEMA. So what you learn on, in the AAT is really, really important and it almost gives you that groundwork, so the, the bottom layer of, say, a pyramid for you to be able to do studies with SEMA and SIFA, etc. Because I spoke to so many students who didn't do AAT or didn't do ATT, which is Association of Tax Technicians, and went on to do SEMA or ACC, etc. And a lot of information, they almost take it that you know that. So it's almost a given that they think that you already understand certain chapters of SEMA, for instance. Whereas if you're already AAT, then you would have covered that in a subject prior, which almost gives you a little bit of an advantage. Now, another thing that I didn't know that I wish I'd known so that I could say this to other people who didn't know either, is that you don't have to be the age of 16 or 18 to do AAT. I know of a lot of individuals who are in their 40s, 50s, 60s, who are just undertaking the AAT, so you can do it at any age. There's no age barrier at all. So you might be an individual who's looking at a change in career and looking at the AAT thinking that's a really good option. But don't be afraid if you are trying to change career because there's a lot of st study support out there to help you with your AAT. And specifically, if you want to join my group, then I'm always here for support so you can ask me any question you like. doesn't matter if you think it's stupid. I'm sure that I've asked those questions when I was a student. So you're not alone and don't be afraid to ask. Now, the final thing that I wish I had known is that when you're doing the levels they will build you up to the point that when you get to the level four then you've already got this prior knowledge that you're building with you so there are synoptic tests at the end of every level currently where they'll test you on everything for level two everything then on level three and then everything on level four but they'll be slowly building you up through each subject level that you do so that by the time you get to level four 
then you're not just getting a load of information at once and thinking where is this all come from you've got that foundation level of information to build upon and in terms of practice there's lots of study text workbooks and tasks to go through to test your knowledge as well so you'll get there and the last thing that I wish I had known before sunny 80 is just how relatable it is because you might not know or you might just presume that what you're learning on paper doesn't apply to practice but in reality what you're learning with the AAT does apply in I'd say 85 to 90 percent of the time in practice depending on what your role is so some things you might not see just because you might be say um, in purchase ledger not in purely in a council system role or vice versa so i'd say that the at does give you that really good foundation for when you're going into accounting for the first time so it doesn't matter if you've never been in finance or you've never been anywhere near a ledger or anywhere near anything accounting related the AT will give you that good starting platform to get started so it's a really good route into accounting and you can do that again in practice or in industry and definitely when I started AAT I didn't know what industry or practice was I didn't know there was a difference I just presumed that all accountants worked in practice I didn't realize that you could work in industry commercially so I hope you found this video useful as always please do consider subscribing and I shall see you on the next video